The Arctic is warming faster than anywhere on the planet. In 15 years, it's expected there will be no more ice in the region over summer. These changes are transforming the landscape and the ecosystems living within them. With less icy surfaces to roam, iconic creatures like the polar bear are under serious threat. We're joined now by Dr. Amelie Mayer, who's a polar oceanographer with the University of Tasmania. Very good evening. Um, describe to us what is happening there uh, in this region and, and as the ice disappears, what's being left behind? So the Arctic, um, you know, has sea ice that floats. It's not actually a continent and it forms and melts uh, with seasons. Uh, there's always ice, even in the middle of summer, but it does melt throughout summer. Um, with climate change and global climate change, we've seen the Arctic uh, melting a little bit more every summer and that sea ice has been uh, decreasing quite fast. Um, so it's less thick than it used to be. It used to be, let's say, about five metres thick 30 or 40 years ago. And now it's on average only 1.5 metres, so the height of a small person. It's also decreasing in size and getting smaller. Um, and this ice is a home um, and it's an ecosystem, so you have things that live on it, in it and under it. And as it disappears, it affects everything around it. Um, you had the pleasure of living and working there for six months or so back in 2015. What was it that was so magical about the place for you? Uh, actually, Ilana, the whole family moved um, north to Norway for me to take this job and we lived in the Arctic for four years, not quite close to the North Pole and on the ice, but the whole family moved and, and lived in this area. So we saw firsthand what was happening and then with the work, I actually go on research vessel and go and collect data to look at what is actually happening. And indeed, I spent several months on a frozen, on a boat that was frozen within the ice and moving with the ice. And it's um, really special to go up north, so close to the North Pole, where not many people have actually been, especially in winter. Um, and spending all these weeks um, on the ice, it's completely dark in winter, minus 40 with storms, and working is actually quite um, difficult. Mm. Um, but what was really special was seeing firsthand what we have up there, what's so special and what we try and protect through our work. What, what are the worst case scenario fears for the disappearance of, of species like the polar bear? So as the ice goes, um, everything changes. So you have plants growing in the ocean that can't really grow there anymore or new ones that come in. And um, as you just say, that has an impact on bigger species like the polar bears or the seals um, that live on the ice and feed um, in the ocean. So I guess what we don't know is what the Arctic is going to look like once there is uh, no sea ice in summer up there and, um, you know, what species will take over and which one uh, will really struggle. We know the polar bears, for example, um, by the end of the century will find it hard to have a home there and will have to retreat on nearby land rather than the actual sea ice. Mm. And, and that's partly, is it because of the way evolution has made them in that they, they hoard food, they, they stock up and then go for the lean months just eating off their fat reserves rather than finding food? Yeah, so without the sea ice, they just don't have their hunting platform. And when they're on land, they're exposed to other things. So without the sea ice, they just don't have a home. That's, that's the main problem for, yeah. the, for the polar bears. And, and what's happening um, in terms of the plankton population? I, I've been reading that that's significantly increasing. Is that a good thing? So there are a lot of more plankton and it's shifting. It's just a bit like crops on land, you know, um, you're used to growing certain crops under certain climate and when your climate change, well, the crops don't grow as well and new crops suddenly show up and some of them are not crops, they're weeds. So it's not always good what takes over um, and the local population ecosystem is used to certain type of, of um, phytoplankton and, and, and plants that they feed on. So when that changes, everybody has to move. So we see species moving, fish traveling further away and new ones coming in that we're not used to. It, it's a, an evolution process. Do we have to resign ourselves to this, this is what it will be for the Arctic or are, uh, 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 are people trying to do things that will change its course? So I'm not sure it's um, evolution as much. It's really uh, much faster than evolution at this stage. It's happening over decades, whereas evolution would be happening over millennia or centuries. 
So in this case, we're just putting a lot of pressure on a system that's changing really fast. And um, the question is, you know, how much longer can it take it? What is it going to look like when it really shifts? Um, but I mean, there is hope. Um, if we act now, we can save that unique ecosystem. If we decrease carbon dioxide emissions in the atmosphere, we can actually um, you know, slow down the global warming enough that um, these summers that will be ice-free will only happen occasionally rather than being um, every, every year. We like the map behind you. So how much of this that we're talking about here in the Arctic applies to the Antarctic as well? That's a really good question. Um, there are two very different systems, and I study both. Um, the Antarctic is not quite warming as fast as the Arctic is. The Arctic is a special place where the more you warm it, the faster it warms. It's actually the fastest warming place on Earth, two to three times faster than the rest of the of the Earth. Whereas the Antarctic is, is a bit more um, protected from, from this um, cycle, and, and as a result, uh, not quite the same decline that we've seen in the Arctic, but still, um, for example, 2016 was the year that we've seen the least amount of sea ice in the Antarctic ever. And we still struggle to understand why that happened. And the consequences there are just as important as in the Arctic. We have huge fisheries in the Southern Ocean and things like krill that are the base of the entire food system and, and really impacted by the sea ice and the changes. Dr. Amelie Meyer, thank you very much for talking to us on the ABC News channel. Dr. Amelie Meyer is a po polar oceanographer um, and you can read more about her work and uh, what is happening in the Arctic online. ABC News Online has an in-depth piece about what is happening there. abc.net.au slash news and the photos are fabulous on there as well.